Yo, 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 what's good, family? What's good with y'all, man? Welcome to PNP. You got my, you know, you know who we are, Rashad and Dave. We in the building. We'll let a, a couple of y'all get in here. It takes I know it's taking some time for y'all to get in. Uh, we're gonna have a special guest join us in a in a in a quick second. In a quick second, he's gonna join us. But Dave, uh, you know, you know how we start this thing off. You know how we start this thing off, Dave. How was your weekend, bro? Overall, pretty good, man. I um I had a sick kid on Saturday, but luckily he recovered swell. Uh, but overall, pretty good weekend. The last week of school, this the last full week of school is this week, man. Damn, Dad, we've been out. Nah, fam. We got this week, and then we got next week. My daughter's honors night is Thursday. Kindergarten graduation is Friday. Juneteenth is Saturday. And then I think they get to go to school two more days the following week and just sit there. And then, you know, then, then summer camp begins for the youngest. Yeah, yeah. For me, uh, nothing much, man. I um, oh, I didn't talk I, about my tournament, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dave wasn't going. Nah, see, Dave wasn't going to say nothing. He's, Dave was going to come up here. Dave was going to come up here and not bring it up. And no, I up brought here. it up. Or, or he was going to over sensationalize that he was out here smacking cats on his tournament. Yo, Dad got smacked in his tournament, dog. Yo, Go ahead, Dad. tell him real quick, Dave. Real quick. So, so uh, for those who don't know, I'm a I'm a gamer, but now I'm I'm pretty much in the casual state of gaming at this point. And um, you know, Virtual Fighter Five got updated to Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. So I was like, you know what, one of the guys. I saw him on Twitter talking about he wanted to do a turn. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and put my let me put my name in the hat. See how this goes. You know, I said I was going to prepare. I was going to sit there. I was going to do what I needed to do. Didn't have time to prepare. Had a lot of things going on in life. I almost bowed out. And I said, no, nah, I'll get in. So, like, nah, first, you should have bowed out. Nah, nah, nah. So, no, so no, it's all right. You know, you do what you got to do sometimes. So, I mean, it was free. It was cost me any money. I was like, you know what? I'm in. Sunday, I'm in. So, you know, first round. Got to show up. <laughs> I advanced. I was like, yes. So, you know, I was, I was like, all right, you know. <laughs> Second round, God did show up. Demolished. Yeah, he showed up. <laughs> and he showed and I'm, I'm watching because I'm not doing I was preparing for the show today. So I'm doing my notes and all this. And I'm so I'm, let me check Dave out on, on this joint. I know Dave games real hard. He nice at everything pretty much. And so I saw him. I was like, "Yo, Dave." I was like, "Yo, you getting smacked? Like you, you started out okay, but then that dude smacked you like three times in a row, bro." Like I was like, "Man, what is going on with Dave?" Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, I know what was happening in my mind. Like I knew what was happening, how it was happening, understood exactly what was happening to me, other than the destruction. But I could do nothing about it, bro. It just was bad. So then you know, it's double elimination. So then you get to go to the losers. Yeah. So I went to losers. My first opponent of losers didn't show up. Got another bye. Then the next opponent of losers, I played him in casuals prior to. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is not going to go well. And I, I almost beat him one match. But overall, I didn't, I didn't make it through the cut. Because you get it's best two out of three matches. And that was that. And that was the end of my day. I was right. I, I was 13th. 13th in virtual yeah. final. Yeah, you got smacked. But all right, you know, for for me, real quick, I didn't I didn't do nothing this weekend. I'm on call for work, uh, so I didn't do nothing. Didn't have nothing planned. But that's enough for us, Dave. That's enough for us, Dave. We got a special guest. You know how we like to do? We like to reach out to some some other uh, YouTubers, uh, and this guy was uh, heavily requested uh, for for a couple guys. So you, you know, we we monitor our chat, and they said, "Hey, man, you gotta you gotta check out Panthers Post." I'm like, "What was Panthers Post?" All right, so I'm, I'm I checked them out. He's got good work, uh, and so we decided to reach out and bring him on the show, man. He he's real close to uh, to one K, so I'm hoping we can give him the PMP boost, the patented PMP boost to get him up uh, to to uh, to to one K. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, we got Phil Perkins uh, from Panthers Post. Welcome, welcome to the show, brother. Welcome to the show. 
Thanks so much. I figured I have a, I got the Car Car Carolina Panther blue behind me. It just fits. It but, does. Uh, it, it looks does, good, right? It, it was it wasn't good. planned like this. I'm at work still. I have yet to leave work because uh, I see Dave's got a kid. I got an eight month old, and <sighs> so I I knew I couldn't get loud and excited about the Panthers at home at this hour. But I I appreciate you guys. This is wild. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait. It's funny. Like this week. On multiple on alternating weeks, I have to do my show in my kitchen. Mm. So this week I'm in the kitchen because my, my wife is downstairs in vocal uh. classes. My son, I just sent to bed, and my daughter's about to wish my my um my mother a happy birthday today. Wow. So yeah, it's it's kind of chaotic in my house. Well, Thank God for to your guys level yet. You guys got the, the green screen manscape thing behind you. I'm yeah. I'm still in my mud room. I got we have a mud room because we got we're we're all on the same coast, so we got winter and fall and all that sure. stuff. I'm in the mud room and it's, it hasn't changed, but it gets hot. So here I'm in our, our ventilated studio here. So things are a bit so, nicer. So that's, uh, yeah. So you, I, I was doing my research, doing my, doing my, my thing, uh, because you know, if I bring somebody on the show, I got to know what's good. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's uh, like, so we, what's crazy about it is that like, you're a prof like, you're a real, like, per like you do this, like this, this broadcasting thing, this is what you do. And it's funny mm -hmm. to me because we got, you know, we got 10,000 subscribers I can't speak for shit. I, I bumble over my words all the time. I can't talk, but people seem to tune in a, a lot. So you've got an advantage because and just tell tell my audience uh, mm -hmm. a little bit about yourself, how you became a Panthers fan, why you started the channel before we get into the topics. Yeah. So uh, let's start with the Panthers thing. So, okay, I'm in Toronto, Drakeville. Uh, so not too far away from Charlotte, uh, five hour drive or so, five hour drive, five hour drive. And so, so most people here are Bills fans, so it's a, it's a big AFC yeah. East town. So there's a lot of Bills, like like Buffalo is like an hour away from where I'm at right now. A lot of Miami Dolphins fans, not a lot of Patriots fans, but you know, that, that's basically our choice right now. And my family weren't big on sports, and so I got to basically pick and choose. And uh, I was playing football in high school, and the, the Panthers and Patriots Super Bowl really caught my eye. And then the dynamic with Steve Smith and Mushi Muhammad. I still remember that Sports Illustrated cover, uh, you know, saying the Carolina Panthers are real. And so that really caught my eye. But also, um, you know, I'm a kid in the 90s. And in Toronto, 1995 was a big year. So we had we got the Toronto Raptors. Mm -hmm. And then you guys got the Carolina Panthers. So something about the teal or about the, the blue – Mm -hmm. And then the purple for the Raptors, it just it, it clicked. And uh, when I got older, uh, I had a, one friend, an acquaintance through a buddy of mine who played college ball in the States. And, you know, he got drafted by the Carolina Panthers. His name was Sean Ware. He was a linebacker out of New Hampshire. And I was, he was the same draft year as Cam Newton, who I was enamored by, like, in, in college. And I was like, this guy's going to change the game. He's going to change. He's gigantic. He, he's a passer. He's a runner. He hits you like a running back does, uh, like Earl Campbell style. And then when I heard he got drafted by the Carolina Panthers, I asked him, like, what's this guy all about? What's this Cam Newton guy all about? Because he's mad flashy. He can talk. He seems like he can go into the booth right away and, and, and be a play-by-play -play guy uh, and an analyst. And he just says he's a real student of the game. He's a hard worker. And, you know, he he's, he's the first overall pick, but he doesn't act like when he acts like an undrafted free agent. And so – I really, really started following hard with Cam and, and rode that. And um, I've been to Charlotte a bunch of times for work. And my friend was a reporter down there. I, we drove down there and spent some time. My brother and I have gone a bunch. Uh, I feel like it's like a sneaky, uh, it's like a secret no one wants to talk about in terms of like yeah. a fun bachelor, bachelorette place. Mm -hmm. Like it is a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, yeah, during the pandemic, you know, so I'm a reporter by trade. So I reporter anchor, like that's our anchor desk. So I anchor right there. That's super cool, man. That's, yeah, that's dope. Cool. And, um, you know, pandemic, you guys are getting more of a, you know, real life in the States. We, we still, school hasn't been in session since March. No yeah. school. It's that's been crazy. online. Uh, the Blue Jays haven't played in Toronto since 2019. And, Right. The Raptors have been That's playing crazy. in Tampa. It's, it's wild. Right. And so it gets kind of kind of you get kind of down. And so I wanted to change it up. I needed to do something. And uh, I wanted to talk about something uplifting and fun. You know, nothing's more uplifting and fun than sports. And the Panthers, you know, while last year didn't give me a lot of joy, 
you know, in the past they've given me a ton of joy and I feel like I'm, I'm seeing this team and I'm sure you guys feel the same, but you know, they're building that foundation. I think they're building it the right way. And I just wanted to talk about it and, you know, uh, getting us to this point, it's just wild that I'm talking to you guys because you guys are ahead of the game in this. And you're, you're more polished than you think. You guys look good. You guys look yes, good. Rashad's man. got great teeth. You know? <laughs> I do have pretty teeth. My, my parents pay for these, man. I'm grateful all the time. That's okay. My parents pay for mine. Mine aren't that good, but you guys are great. Like, you got the sponsorships and stuff. Like, I can only yeah. wish, like, down the line that could be something. Hard work, but, bro. Hard work yeah. and consistency, man. We've been doing That's this since you. 2017. Uh, so it's, it's been a minute, uh, and it just started coming this past year. So we we exploded this year. So I can't say that you know we've been um, you know we we haven't been always been this good. We we just kind of well, exploded over the pandemic. So from hotel yeah. rooms, yeah, for living rooms, yeah. 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 Right. I used to travel. <laughs> I used to travel for work, and I used to do the show. That's the main reason why I started it because I needed something to do on Mondays. Mm -hmm. uh, because because yo, we me and Dave always you know we 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 always talked about the Panthers offline. So we said, "Hey, I'm I'm traveling for work. Let's just let's just record ourselves doing it." And that's how PNP was born. But, uh, but yeah, man. So this is awesome, man. Again, like I said, the purpose of us bringing other folks on is because we didn't have anybody help us out. Like we, mm -hmm. yo, we we was in the in the dirty. Uh, like we all everything we've done was self made. Nobody helped us out. We we kind of reached out to some folks, and they, you know, you know how they are. So. Uh, we always, if, if we see somebody working hard and, and they, they got some good content or, you know, our fans, like we, we, we call us, we, we, we are, are, are men of the people. So if they ask for it, we're going to give it to them. Hey, you guys should collab with such and such. So, so we do it. So, and that's, that's why we want to bring you on. Plus we want to get, we want to, we want to show our, uh, give our audience other opinions because they get tired of hearing us talk all the time. So maybe, maybe you got some differing opinions um, and, and you can share them with us. Yeah, they're right. not clearly they're not tired, but like yeah, I think the <laughs> pandemic has brought a lot of good and like, you know, people stuck at home and it's it's wild that it's picking up now because right now the Panthers it's like it's like buy low right now with the Panthers. Like I don't know if you saw some Bill Barnwell stuff. He he is he's not happy with what the Panthers did in the offseason. I think you know, some things that might, he might not click with, but you know, I feel like they're not getting the love that they probably should by what it's they're always, doing. It's always yeah. like that. There's it's not a Panther like seasons that. without that, man. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, let's let's go ahead and jump into some of this content. Um, yeah. I'm going to share uh, my screen here. Um, you guys know how I do with the slide game. Before we get into the content, we would be remiss if we did not talk about our alma mater and how they performed in this track, uh, this track championship. Man, they, they went off. Dave, I'm going to give you the floor uh, since I'm, I think you watched everything. So I'm going to give you the floor real quick. Uh, talk about it, Dave. A&T track. We nice. A&T track is, is world renowned now, brothers and sisters. A&T track. Uh, they ended up third place in the men's competition, fourth place in the women's competition. No other university was able to be in the top four. We got trophies on both the men and the women. We got national championships on the men's side in the 4 by 400 Randall, Randolph, Randolph Ross. Ross run the 400 meter as well. So we got two national championships on the men's side and Cam Sturgis won the 100 meter and the 200 meter on the women's side to take on some national championships. And we placed pretty good in some other events as well. So shout out to the team, Dwayne Ross. A few years ago, he, um, he had his Ether moment when he was talking about these other coaches being shocked about the fact of how good they are. They need to start coaching their kids. And he showed what it takes and what the example is. And coming from a HBCU from the Mid, Mid, Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, soon to be the Big South, it's big, Facts. big deal. Huge yeah, deal. yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know we we always big up our university anytime. Football, track, volleyball, salt, whatever you whatever you want to talk about. When, and we doing something good. We gonna talk about it on this channel. And uh, man, shout out to Randolph Ross because this dude is a freshman too, dog. And he's this he's about to be in the Olympics, man. Real talk. Oh yeah, he this he's going to beast. trial. A couple of these folks are going to trials too. Yeah, this dude is a beast, man. The four hundred meters, like he's a monster. And without his performance uh, in the four by four, the four by four hundred, like we would have lost because we was like in like second to last before his. Uh, yeah, before his his uh, his when he got the baton. He got us back in first. So this dude ran off Ross is a beast, man. So shout out to uh shout out to anti track, man, for real. Dave, a, anything else? Go ahead. An interesting thing about the women, like during the 100, 110 meter hurdle, the hundred meter hurdles, we had two women in the final, and we had one that had a shot at second, but she she fell on the final hurdle. 
But because she finished the race, we got the points. Mm. That pretty much got us tied for fourth place. Nice. Because only the top four teams get trophies. So yeah. that, you know, I know a lot of folks was like, man, she fell. I was like, nah, but she finished the race. Finish. And because she finished the race, we got the points. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. <laughs> so, and that was, that was literally the difference between us getting the trophy and not. And then Cam yeah. winning those two races didn't, didn't, didn't hurt at all either. So yeah. shout out to A&T, man. This is big. Shout out man. to A&T, man. Big time. Big time. I cannot wait for football season, bro. We about to smack everybody. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, let's let's move on. Let's move on to the uh to some things here, real quick. Uh, make sure y'all go and uh, hop on uh, the Newsbreak app. Download Newsbreak app. The link is in the description box. It's big time. It helps us out. We we cross posting some of our content over there, uh, and it just, it just helps. So go and download the new download the Newsbreak app uh, and help us out. All right. Um, shout out to all the Patreon members, uh, the patrons. Uh, real quick, shout out, shout out to all y'all, man. I can't get through all of them because we got so much stuff to get through. But shout out to all the free agents, shout out to the franchise players, and shout out to the MVPs. Y'all know who y'all are, man. Shout out to all y'all. We appreciate y'all support, uh, and we love y'all. All right. And if you are a Patreon, you would catch this this exclusive Morgan Fox interview. We sat down with Morgan Fox. We spoke to him. It's actually a really good interview. Like I did mm-hmm. not. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I did not expect this interview to turn out the way it did. This dude, we actually had a real interesting moment. And I'm going to talk about the day. You know what I'm talking about. A real interesting <laughs> moment. We were straight trash and Phil Snow. Like, and listen, uh, we yeah. lo- we told him we told him that we love Phil Snow. But we we told him how how much of a hard time we was giving Phil Snow when he was first hired. We called him garbage, the three man rush, all that stuff. We called all that out, and we was we were trashing him. And Morgan Fox actually G-checked us, yo. He said, he said, yo, he was like, yo, relax on my man Phil Snow. I said, all right, that's it. We ain't going to talk about it. We ain't going to talk bad about him no more. Shout out to Morgan Fox. This is a really good interview. Yeah. Dave, what, any thoughts on yeah, the interview? You guys are getting a lot of guests, man. You guys are letting, like, get, getting a lot of great guests. Like, that's a big get for him. He was a big free agent pickup. For sure. Yeah, and it was a grind. It was a grind. It's a lot of backstory that we, we save. We save those stories for our Patreon members. But the backstory behind this interview is crazy. Um and it's it's ridiculous, but yeah, we we work hard to get these. Again, we're not credential credentialed, right? So, I mean, it's it's tough getting these interviews. So, shout out to us for getting those. I'm gonna pat myself on. Yeah, shout on out the to back you guys. That's, wild. That's it's, awesome. Yeah, awesome. it's hard. It's hard. But yeah, Morgan Fox, real cool dude, man. Shout out yeah, to Morgan man. Fox, man. That was a hilarious moment because he pretty much cheat checked me, man. I was like, oh, got it, man. We won't pick on your guy no more. <laughs> Yeah, but now nah, yeah, we, really we, we can't interview. talk about Phil Snow, but, but really good interview, really good interview. All right, so uh, <laughs> all right, let's let's move on. Uh, go ahead and cop the shirts. Uh, we got some t shirts. Uh, if you check right above the comments, depending on where you're watching, above or below the comments, go and uh, and cop yourself a shirt. I got the I got the PNP shirt on right now. Go and pick you one up, super dope. Appreciate all the support there. All right, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. It's, it's time to talk, talk mm-hmm. about some real things here. Because HaHa ha Clinton Dix, it was reported today that HaHa ha is going to participate uh, at Panthers minicamp on a tryout basis. Okay, he was supposed to try out with the Texans. Uh, I don't know if he did. They didn't like him. They didn't pick him up. Whatever the case may be, didn't work out. But HaHa ha Clinton Dix, former Pro Bowl safety. Okay, any thoughts on this? Any thoughts on this? Dave, we'll start with you. All right, so for me, man... I'm wondering, and I'm assuming he got hurt. Otherwise, he should already be off the market, I'm guessing. I mean, he's too young to be out here in these streets, but I am open to taking a safety. We've been mm-hmm. begging for a safety all offseason. We've been begging for a safety in the draft. We didn't get neither. So, hey, this guy will start day one if he's healthy. Yeah, what, is he, he's 28 years old. He's a veteran. I don't know, yeah, whether he was injured or maybe he didn't play last year because of COVID. Because, uh, you know, a lot of players did not – I'm not sure if it's hurt or not. But, you know, uh, with, with this defense, we're talking about Phil Snow, the pressure is kind of on him because they're building this defense, whether it's in the free agency and even in the draft after last year. So the pressure's on him. But I, I feel like that would be a great pickup. And like you, you mentioned, they're looking for a safety to get some depth there. Uh, you know, with Jeremy moving back there as well, it wouldn't hurt to have a veteran there to kind of teach him the you know little tricks of the trade as well. I think it'd be great if, they, if it works out. If he stays healthy and picks up that, you know, picks up the playbook and shows that he can be that versatile player that they're looking for. 
Yeah, so uh, just going back to to Ha Ha with the Cow because he was signed with the Cowboys. He was released before uh, Week One. Uh, he signed a nice little contract, and apparently he got beat out in training camp by a younger guy. But this guy, man, he was a. I mean, I think he got the raw end of the deal up in up in Green Bay when they had the coaching change. Uh, but the dude, I mean, he's a former Pro Bowler. Uh, you you know, say what you may about the Pro Bowls, whether they count or not. You know, the fan vote and all that stuff. And you know, you kind of it is what it is with the Pro Bowls. But I dig. I did a little digging. I did a little digging, all right, and uh, found a couple of things. So look, look, take a look at his his, uh, his uh, pro football focus grades because these grades are actually pretty damn good. I I was not expecting this, <laughs> and uh, like I mean, sixty seven it was his lowest, and that was his rookie season. I mean, mm-hmm. everything else everything else was seventy plus. I mean that and seventy is is good in PFF. Green is good, right? So he has been a really solid free safety when he's on the field when he's available. The dude. And when he plays, I mean, he played in all 16. Look at the, the thousands of snaps that he's got. I mean, those that's a lot of snaps that he's played. Um, and so it's, it's just interesting, man. It's, it's really interesting. I don't know why he's out there right now. I'm not sure why he's available. I'm, a, I'm assuming he, he opted out for COVID. I'm, I'm assuming maybe. They say he was oh, released, connected. though, by the Cowboys. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know, and man. Play um, nobody and nobody play picked him. Franchise. He played with Green Bay, right? They play in big games at Green Bay. So he's battle yeah. tested, like you're saying. For sure, yeah. He played with Green Bay, played with uh, Chicago. Um, the dude, I mean, the guy is 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 a solid player. I'm not sure why he's not out there, um, mm-hmm. or why he is out there on the open market. But it, w- but I did even more digging. Okay, I did a little bit more digging because y'all know how I am. I gotta, I gotta dig. Okay, and so what I found was, Dave, and this is this is gonna be interesting to folks here. All right, so what I found was his snap counts. Okay, his career alignment. Uh, at free set, he's a true. He's a free safety, right? Sixty percent of his snaps are at free safety. Twenty three percent are at box safety, and he played out a little, a couple snaps here and there in other places. But for the most part, he is a free safety, which is what we need. Need, yeah. I mean, be- I think it. And everybody talks about Malik Hooker and, and bringing on Hooker. Hooker is the one. He's got the real injury issues. Okay, and so I, I, I'm. I see. I I personally would take a flyer on Malik Hooker, uh, but Clint Dix. I mean, this dude is is a, a a good player when he's available. He's a good free safety. I'm not sure what the I guess hesitation is behind. I mean, I guess he hasn't played in a full year, so you got to figure out what you know what's there. But if he's got a mm-hmm. kitty pass a physical, is he in shape? Right. Like we don't know any of that right now, right? right. But now nah, this, like in my eyes. The fan base, as bad as they complain about a safety, this is a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. We got to get him in Absolutely. here. We get him in him. there and he needs to acclimatize. And, you know, there are a couple of players that we drafted, like Brady Christensen, who hasn't played in a minute. Or, no, he did play last time. But there, there are players in the draft who haven't played. Uh, was it David Brown out of Grambling State who, who hadn't David played? Moore. Yeah, he, David, David Moore. David Moore, Moore he who hasn't played, played yeah, in a while. And, you know, they under, uh, uh, undrafted, but still, like, they believe in a guy like him. So, they just almost have to believe in the tape that they've seen already, and, and they trust. Him. Like you said, he's got to pass that physical and then show it up on the field. Yeah. So yeah. yeah so this uh, the chat saying he's never been injured, so it wasn't an injury thing. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I, he, when he again, when he's out there and when he's playing, he's playing like he's he's not getting hurt. He's playing all sixteen, and uh, I I, I want to get excited about it, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, like. It's, there's there's got to be something out there. I mean, he, the Texans didn't take him. Uh, what is it? You know, I'm, but we kinda, we already we already know the Texans don't know how to keep talent anyway. Don't well, yeah, that's, is. that's true. I mean, that's true. Steve Smith told you about that, so that's true. They probably thought he'd had too many wins, so they probably wouldn't get on the Sam Howell train next year. Or something Fair like enough. that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe he'd make them a little bit too good, uh, taking too good. them out of the. Yeah, I get that. That makes yeah. sense. Actually, if the defense gets too good, then then mm-hmm. they get a good run game going. That'll go out of the Texas plans there. Yeah, and, and just to talk about the money, because I see people bringing up money. I mean, the guy only signed a $2.25 million contract last year uh, with the Cowboys. So it's not like he's out here signing, um, you know, big deals or whatever. Uh, so it's not going to take a lot. We've got plenty of cap space. Um, so uh, interesting. Interesting. That's all I'm – that's just interesting. I hope he, you know, works out well because I think we knew – we need uh, – and we'll talk about, you know, what Phil Snow said earlier – in reference to Jeremy Chin, but um, I think we need a real free free safety. Unless because I don't think we're going to be moving Dante back there. 
and we'll talk about that too. But we need a free safety. We don't have a free safety on the roster. And uh, I think, uh, you know, there's guys that can play it, but he actually has played it and he's done it well. <laughs> so get a free safety that, that – sometimes you get these guys that are tweeners, and I think you can have too many tweeners, but – um, yeah. get a guy that knows what he's doing and put him back there. And I think Haha is, is that is a good is a good guy. So, um, is, go ahead. All right, this is a good one. I I won't be mad if if he gets beat out. I won't be mad. But I mean, right now at this point, we need to put him in. See what happens. Mm. You know, that's how I feel about yeah. it. Like I think we know we we the Panthers fan base know. We're not happy with the safety position right now. We've already moved Jeremy Chen to one side. We might as well go in and try to finish the other side. That's where I'm at. Yeah, they picked up a couple of South Carolina guys, right, who hadn't put in play. EK, I forget his last name, but uh, yeah. they, picked, they picked him up as well. But he could, I don't know, like, yeah, the, the younger guy, who's the younger guy? Who yeah, could, yeah, who I don't know who the younger out. guy you're referencing. They're talking about Malik Hooker in the mm-hmm. chat, uh, bringing on Malik, um, but – I, you know, he's got that injury. And I, I personally, I take a fire on Malik, too. I think it's worth – you might as well. There's nothing to lose at that point. Uh, but, I mean, Clinton Dix, he's only 28. So, you're not talking about a huge age gap. And I think he fits that youth movement that we're trying to do moving forward. So, it's not like we're signing a 34-year-old guy. I think Clinton Dix fits that – fits that uh, the age. So, I, I like how they're bringing I, in Pro Bowl, like guys with high upside who've done it before. Like, with A.J. Bouye, right. he's a, he was a Pro Bowler as well. And, you know, he's had success. And I like what they're doing. They're getting guys who've been there and who, who, who performed at the highest level, who could be an extra voice in the room. And I like what they're doing. They got they got their young guys up front, and they got Hassan Reddick and such as well. They add that veteran presence, but then they sprinkle in that little bit of experience on it. And, and I think it's a good that's a good move. If they so if he goes through with it. Yeah. So you brought up a good name. It's a great segue to the next topic, and that is <laughs> AJ Bouye. I mm. I I am. I'm going to be honest with this. And so the Dave, the news is, is that AJ Bouye is apparently going to move to nickel and they want him <laughs> to play nickel. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. To me, like this it. makes absolutely no sense. This makes like zero sense to me. I don't like it. It makes zero sense. And I got to call it like I see it. Okay. Y'all, y'all, you know who I, y'all know who I am. I'm going to say it. This is something that I do not like. Why in the world would you move this guy to nickel when I think Dante Jackson is the nickel guy? And I get it. Dante's going on a a rookie. He's got a, excuse me on his contract year. He wants to play, prove himself an outside cornerback so he can get the bag. So I get that. That makes sense from Dante's side, but from a team perspective and putting the right players in position in the right place to succeed, this makes zero sense to me. So let me. And I, I, did, I did some research. I got some numbers, okay? A.J. Bouye, throughout his entire career, anybody want to take a stab at percentage of uh, nickel snaps he's played? 12%. 4%. Oh, 4% of his career snaps uh, were played at nickel. Mm. Okay? He is an outside – he is a through-and-through – outside cornerback you don't move him he's played outside cornerback his entire career and he's proven so he's been a pro bowler there he's played very very well uh when he's healthy when he's available he's been very good why would you move him to inside cornerback it doesn't make any sense to me anybody else want to help help me out here help me help me understand this please somebody got to help me out dave, anybody got any, any any dave you want to dave you got some some wild theories Give me one. Give me one. Help me out, man. <laughs> you really want a three from me? Yeah. I, I need some help here. Bro, unless unless they unless they came to the conclusion that that man can't play outside anymore. That's the only reason why I can see why they have put that, put him at nickel. Because otherwise it makes no sense. I mean, unless you really like cuz I don't think I don't think the team would try to risk Dante you know, risk if they don't think if they think AJ Bouye is a better outside corner, they would be playing AJ Bouye at the outside corner. They wouldn't move him to nickel. They know they got to put him in though because they want they want to put him they they want to start him. So this is the way to do it. Just find a place for me. Yeah, because Dante like, knows the division like, better. I mean, that is it, but that but the thing is, the division changes too, right? Like, I mean, True. the Falcons aren't yeah, going to be the same gone. Falcons as before. Julio's gone. So from yeah. that standpoint, we're not really. 
we're not really – I'm not too concerned from that aspect. I think it's based on what they think of Dante, right? If They they legitimately think, as of right now, that Dante is the better option at outside corner than AJ. That tells me that they probably don't think he can play outside anymore. The only, th- hmm. the only way that makes sense is that AJ Bouye is going to miss the first two games, all right? So – you got to play somebody out there and maybe Dante holds it down for the first, you know, two games or whatnot. That's cool. But to have a dude like AJ Bouye, who is a proven outside cornerback, play any snaps, any snaps in the slot makes zero sense to me. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're you're wasting it. Yeah, exactly. Then Who do we have on that? We have on the outside, we have Dante who's experienced yet. He was injured last year and, He's undersized. Then you have potentially rookie J.C. Horn on the other side, right? Ain't no potential. Yes. It is going yeah, to be J.C. Horn yeah, on the other side. Be <laughs> <Jason> <laughs> Horn. Yeah, you got that high. It's going to happen. What, what yeah. did Bouye tell him in that, in that article? He's like, so basically, you're defensive rookie of the year. That that's your goal this year. You're the, you're the first defensive player taken. You're going to be defensive rookie of the year. Uh, but yeah, it seems to be a weird placement in resources and stuff like that. But maybe they know something we don't. Maybe about maybe he lost his gas and the speed or something like that. Who knows? Something's up, man. I'm telling you. I can't get with I, that. I understand you can roll with the theory of oh, he's going to be suspended for two games. So you can't have him starting on the outside. But I mean, what kind of what will that do to Dante when game three comes around and then you make the decision to move him back outside and you have to put Dante back in a nickel spot? Like what kind of what kind of chaos are you trying to create? Man, well, if you listen to Phil talk about Dante, I mean, they really – again, Dante's just got to stay healthy, right? I, and I think the biggest thing with Dante, and I, I and a lot of people said this, and I, I agree with you or with them, is that, yo, Dante should be probably playing free safety. I mean, the guy has got really good ball skills. He's extremely yes. rangy. So why not put him in free safety where he can have everything in front of him and just react instead of because playing he got quarterback? A, because he got a hit. I mean, yeah. Gotta be able to tackle. Yeah, gotta hit running back. Left yeah. running back. Yeah. No, I mean, like, so, I mean, I mean, and I'm not trying to knock Dante, but I mean, corners, there's one thing corners don't typically like to do. You know what that is? Mm. Ask Dion. Yeah. <laughs> Dion, Dion said it's not lucrative to be hitting folks. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> mm. you know, they don't get paid maybe, to do that. Maybe, maybe those, we're talking about those young safeties. Maybe we got some young corners, like whether it's Troy Pride or Keith Taylor showing something and, you know, doing rookie mini train camps or something that, hey, these guys could maybe add some more depth on the outside and, and we, yeah, like find a place for him, like a grizzly vet in the nickel, being crafty. I don't know. I'm just trying to get in their heads. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything. I mean, I, I get like scheme versatility, right? You want to have guys play – and learn different roles and, and kind of so you can kind of put dudes anywhere and confuse guys. But I don't know, man. <sighs> Sometimes I, and that's why I think it gets tricky with all these these versatile guys, man. I think you can have too much versatility. Uh, I think you could because you get even Phil Snow said it. I mean, well, we'll talk about Phil a little, little bit later. We'll talk about what he said later. But I mean, I think it, it just gets tricky when you got all these guys trying to put them in the right place. You, you've got to find a place got to play and stick them there and let them play like you, you you can't get cute and i feel like this is a cute move like don't get cute that's Thank just my opinion much. yeah exactly exactly mm-hmm. all right so any more thoughts on uh aj bouye before we move on nah man aj right. i hope he succeeds at nickel but man mm-hmm. that says something for me yeah i don't know all right so our guy the greatest panther of all time is going to be doing some commentary in the preseason. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see Smitty uh, on the commentary team. Any thoughts on this, Dave? I love it. Oh, my, my God, God, I love man. it. Oh, I love it. Oh, man, because he's not going to pull no punches on his comments, man. No. This is going to be this is going to be fun. Like, I got to – I got to – I'm going to – I got to make sure I pay for my game pass for this one. I got to see these. I got to see these live, too. Panther commentary only. I don't want no splits between the fan bases. Mm. I want straight Panther commentation for this com- commentary for this ride. Because mm-hmm. you know he's going to talk smack, man. And, and for, 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 hold on. Before you answer this question, mm. who, do you, who do you think the greatest Panther of all time is? In terms of – wow. If it's – 
Not it's it's for me. It's a toss up between him and Cam, just for what Cam did in the grand. Like I'm from Toronto, and you know Smitty was playing when I I still lived here, but Cam really drew me in. And I wonder if there was like a heat map of interest on, in, in the team once Cam got drafted first overall. You know where you know search histories of Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton, something like that across North America or beyond, you know, I wonder if he would have, a, I think he would have a bigger heat map than when with Smitty in terms of growing the brand and, all, but also what he did on the field as well. Right. He, he won the MVP in 2015, took him to the Super Bowl. He, you know, rookie of the year, you know, who, go, who gets in the hall of fame first? Like Smitty is retired in five years. He's going to get the call. You know, when Cam retires, it's almost, it could be first ballot potentially. No, you know, like, no. I'm gonna be honest, you know, you man. So? I'm, so? I'm gonna be honest, man. I think I yeah. don't think, but I don't think Smith is gonna be first ballot either, right? No, nah, he's not. He's not. No. He's gonna have to he's wait. I think if, if there's anybody that's gonna be our first ballot Hall of Famer, it's gonna be Luke. Oh, oh that's yeah. easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, Luke, that's, Luke will be yeah. first ballot, no question in my mm-hmm. mind. But I think Steve Smith because Pep? of the position you don't that think he's, Pep gonna be first ballot. Well, no, Pep will be first ballot too. But when you talk about somebody who's been a Panther for the bulk of his career. Like pretty much like 80, 90 percent of his career, Steve is gonna have to wait. Cam is gonna have to wait. Pep will be first ballot as well. But Luke, oh, yeah, for somebody Pep. that's played Panthers his entire career, he's gonna be first ballot. Yeah, the only um, way Keekley isn't a first ballot is because he, he comes back and plays for a year and he has to re, he's got to wait for another five yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but I know he's no doubt uh, a first ballot for sure. But I think for me, it's one A can just what he he brought. And then it could be Steve. And then, there, yeah, if you want to talk about, if you want to base on just Hall of Fame, so you'd have to put Pep. Yeah, Keegan and Pep in there too. Yeah, Pep. Pep Maybe not even Keegan, but Pep, what he did. And, you know, he was a freak. I remember watching him like running down Michael Vick in his prime. Like, what defensive lineman does that? Facts. Yeah. So to, to me, to me, Smitty is the greatest Panther of all time. That's why I asked you that. So anyway, mm-hmm. your comments, your comments on uh, on this uh, Steve Smith commentary. You think he's gonna do a good job? I think he's do great. I, I also I think he's gonna be awesome. Like remember that clip? I think it was an all or nothing when he was talking shit to the DJ, talking about like should I start doing fantasy or not? You know, this rookie you're yeah. kind of shaky. I think if yeah. we can bring that kind of energy. Uh, you know, for two hours, like Steve Smith on with a mic for two hours live is going to be ridiculous. The things he's oh going to say, man. it's going to spin out to so much merch, the kind of the, the, the stuff he's going to say. But I also think as a, as a big picture, I'm a galaxy brain guy. The fact how, how badly it ended with the Panthers. Remember when he torched him when he was with the Ravens and, you know, new <laughs> owner. I remember. Remember when they played that game? It destroyed. It's just letting guts. Blood and guts. It man. was so blood and guts. And then now like he, yesterday. He's wearing, yeah. And he's wearing Panther gear now. He's he's now on their payroll again. Like shout out to the front office and like smoothing that out. Like it's it's that's a big move on, on many different levels. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm gonna be excited to, to hear this every, today. Every everybody everybody's talking to like like Luke isn't gonna be first ball. Let me tell you guys something. Luke had more tackles than any other player while he was playing. In the Yo, league. like we don't even Luke need is, to debate that. He's no, no, no. I'm no, though. I'm here to help. I'm I'm here to help. We don't so, need help though. <laughs> no, no, we don't need help, but obviously they need help. So I'm here to help them. The man won the defensive rookie of the year and defensive player of the year back to back. The dude's going to the Hall of Fame. He's first, he's first ballot. Yeah, and if you talk to players too, like like Drew Brees, like Hall of Famer, potentially all timer, it, it pains me to say, it was like playing another quarterback. You know when they always say Tom Brady versus Drew Brees, they don't actually play against each other. But yeah. Luke Keekley against Drew Brees, they actually play against each other, and he hated it. And so he, he called plays. He was what? Yeah. I don't even know what if they're comparing to Patrick Will. I don't think Patrick Will has ever won Defensive Player of the Year, but I could be wrong. I'm not, uh, sure, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, not sure. Top of my head. But all right. So yes, yeah, Steve Smith gonna be doing commentary. They did the Panthers did a little video for it. Uh it's pretty cool. That was uh, hilarious. I, I'm I'm uh I'm excited for it. Can't wait to see it. Uh and it's gonna be interesting, man. It's, the dude is hilarious. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Can't wait for it. All right. So real quick, I got a shout out to my man Devin Proctor. Uh he is a supporter of this channel. And he asked me uh, to kind of share. He, he just got a, became a contributor over at Cat Crave blog. So I'm shouting out this article. The article is not, I didn't put it in the description box, but 
But if you go to Cat Crave and you see this four potential mistakes uh, the Carolina Panthers made this offseason, click on that joint. Shout out to my guy, Devin Proctor. He is a, uh, again, he's a, a Patreon supporter. He, the, matter of fact, Dave, this dude even got his dad some Manscaped cologne, Dave. So, mm. hey, man, this, this, yo, so this, this dude is an ultimate PNP supporter. So we need to let this dude uh, uh, go out there, click on this man's joint, pause, mm-hmm. read it, support this man because he supports us. And that being said, Dave, I also got my dad the Manscaped Cologne, Dave. Did. I did. did. You got to wrap it up. Wrap it up for your pops. Listen, (laughs) man. Let me tell you something, man. Summer's coming. You know that, right? It is. Are you ready to unveil your beach vibe? You're in luck. Our friends at Manscaped just launched the fourth generation performance package, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right? The 4.0. Compliment your dad bod or six pack with the trim from the leaders in male grooming. The sun is shining and calling your name, fellas. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for, for your hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code PNP. Look, man, have you ever hurt your balls while you're trying to trim them, bro? Unfortunately, it, it's happened, Dave. It has yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah, it happens to the best of us, man. You know? So it's time to bundle up with the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Inside this package, you'll find a lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance yeah. boxer briefs, and a travel uh, bag to hold your goodies. First off, the new performance package 4.0 includes the new lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer is insane, and I dare I say the goat of ball trimmers. Yeah, man. I don't have to, I have to agree with them there. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor. A new multifunction on-off switch can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? In the shower or in the wild and from your chest pubes all the way down to your ball fro, the lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer for you. Want to take your grooming game even further to the next level? The performance package 4.0 also includes the weed whacker to chop your worst weeds up in your nose and ear, I got to get one of those, boss. And the Weed Walker, Weed Walker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor power, 360 degree rotary dual blade system. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Seal to deal with Manscaped's liquid form- formulations. Before heading outside, use crop preserver ball deodorant to keep your game, keep you on your game in the heat. Then after trimming the lawn and whacking the weeds in the heat, give your beach balls a boost and use Crop Reviver. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code PNP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping using the code PNP at manscaped.com. Escape the shrubs and weeds this summer and shine with Manscaped. And always remember, your balls will thank you. Facts, facts. Real quick, uh, Father's Day is coming up. Father's Day is coming up. So make sure you go ahead and get your pops. Uh, get your pops something, bro. Like I know, you know, old old folks may not, you know, get the, you know, get the get the weed whacking popping, but go go cop them some uh, some some refined cologne. I got my daddy's joint right here. Matter of fact, got it right here. Mm. Uh, go go um, go cop it for your pops. Uh, we appreciate that. So uh, shout out to Manscaped. Uh, we we love them. We love them. So any, anything else on Manscaped? What you get your dad for Father's Day, Dave? I haven't gotten anything Nothing? yet. I gotta I gotta figure Come that on, out. Come on, Dave. Look, man. What are you doing, bro? You running out of time, man? I'm never running out of time. Amazon's around. Manscaped's around. I'll get it down. There. I'll get it down there in the streets. I get twenty percent off free shipping, bro. I got time. Yeah, yeah all right. I got, so I got time. Sure. Take care of your pops, bro. Take care Look, of your pops. It's, it's not expensive either. It's not expensive. It's Use not. that code. Use that code. You'll be just fine. All right. So um, moving on, moving on, moving on. Dave, this was excellent reporting. 
by uh by uh Jeremy Ego from the Carolina Huddle. He posted this joint and tracked down Robbie Anderson. And we think <laughs> we think Robbie Anderson might be in Charlotte. Okay, if you look at this post. He's getting off a oh, plane. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Charlotte. Yeah, he's getting off a plane. That's CLT right there, man. The a, A24 gate, which appears to be at Charlotte, uh, uh, Douglas International Airport. So D- Robbie Anderson could be ready to go for minicamp. Minicamp starts tomorrow uh, through the 17th, I believe. So Robbie Anderson is back again. Like I said earlier, all the other stuff, the OTAs were voluntary. So he didn't have to show up. Oh, and he exercised his right to not show up because he was definitely not there. But minicamp is mandatory, and so he will be there, it appears. It appears that Robbie Anderson, this is some TMZ, TMZ level stuff mm. right here, man. Track dog, me down. Dog, he's in Charlotte, bro. I know, look, I've, I fly to that airport often. That's typically my stomping grounds when I fly home. I don't mm. fly into Columbia. I fly into Charlotte. I dig it. All right, so are you guys in North Carolina? Where are you guys stationed, by, by the way? I am. I, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm the only Panthers YouTuber here in, in uh, Charlotte. So mm-hmm. I'm here. Dave is, is probably is close to you, actually. I'm in Rhode Island, man. I'm not too far from Toronto. Oh, I haven't wow. been there. Yeah, I'm in Rhode Island. Oh, that's dope. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Charlotte's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's- indeed. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, I don't know if I ever roll up in a Porsche, though. That's, is, he going, <laughs> is he walking away from the Porsche, or is he walking towards I think- it? I think he just got off uh, David Tepper's private plane, mm. and I think he's you know he got escorted to the gate by by that Porsche. Mm. Uh, he's got the bag holder right there for him behind him. Uh, so I think this is this is great. This is excellent reporting. This is excellent yeah. reporting, man. TMZ level stuff. Yeah, they need to make um, sure he was here. They need to confirm that he was here. Facts, facts. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, Jimmy from, Jeremy, the, uh, from the huddle, man. Uh, but yeah, man. Shout out to Robbie Anderson. Hopefully, we'll see him tomorrow. Uh, we'll get some good clips. Mm-hmm. I'll make sure I put them together for you if I can find anything. They've been stingy on the clips lately, bro. It's not. It's not me. Mm-hmm. They it's spread not them me. out. They spread them out. Yeah, it's, they've been stingy, man. Even even the uh, the the credentialed uh, uh, reporters have have not been posting the OTA stuff. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Hopefully, we'll get something from uh, from minicamp tomorrow. I wonder if they're going to catch on on that because, like us, like we're not credentialed, even though. You can argue that you guys should be for your reach. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure yeah. more people watch this video than read articles, potentially. No disrespect. But, you know, we're kind of at the mercy of what they post. You know what I mean? Yeah, for like, sure. I, I feel I, like I haven't gotten a DM from the Panthers, like, hey, stop using this stuff. But, like, you know, yeah. I'm at the mercy of, you know, Bill Voth and whatever. He, you know, he posted a nice Shy Smith route, like, last yep. week, two weeks ago. I'm like, wow. Like, I wish I was there because for a whole day, you could just isolate on one dude for a whole right. day. And I'll tell you that a lot uh, to, to piggyback off of that. So we don't have access to OTAs and mini camps, but if training camp is open to the public, mm. you're going to want to be sure to, to be subscribed to this channel. Cause I'm going to be going live from training camp for sure. Awesome. 100%. So make sure you're subbed up and we have a connection with ESP and upstate. Hopefully we'll get to do a live broadcast with them. Mm. It's going to be awesome. So make sure, make sure you are subbed up because training camp is going to get really interesting if we get all the access where we've been told we're going to get. So Great. just stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, all right, let's get into it. This was kind of the main attraction here. The, these coordinated interviews, some of these joints was real, were real telling. Phil Snow is the guy. And, again, we were we were tough on Phil Snow starting out. Dave wanted him fired at week two. I said, Dave, wait, I think he's going to turn it around. And I think he did a good job on the back half of the season. He admitted that to him. He admitted that himself during the interview that he turned it around in the latter half of the season. He's got a bunch of young guys. Um, but there's a couple of takeaways. And one of the quotes here, he says, talent wise, we got some good pieces, but it's on us now. And I think it's really, I think that's a really telling point is that he's got guys. He's got the guys he wants and the guys he needs to execute his system the right way and the way he wants to do it. And again, I'm, I'm still I'm just a little nervous about the versatility aspect because you got too, so much versatility that it's going to be tough on the coordinator to get the best out of every everybody. You got to put guys in the right places to see. And when you have so many versatile guys that you can move around, maybe you're missing something and maybe you may miss, um, you know, putting somebody in the right position because you have so many other guys trying to play the same position. So I feel he admitted that, though. He admitted that in the interview. He said, yo, I got a tough job. I got a tough job. So um, 
Is there any other main takeaways that you you guys? I don't know if you listened to it or not, but are there any other takeaways that you guys had from these interviews or from Phil Snow's interview uh, specifically? I'm gonna be honest. I haven't watched any of them yet. I, that was on my list, and I haven't done it yet. But I've I've heard like some of the highlights of it, some of the things that you were saying. I think Phil Snow is is was pretty honest. Everybody I talked to that's watched it said it was probably one of the most straightforward interviews from a coach that they've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. So that that says a lot about him. I just I really haven't had the time to watch it. But um, you know, he's transparent with what the process was during the season, from what I understand. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I haven't watched either, but like I said earlier in the show, like the pressure's on him because he's he's getting the guys, he's getting the talent, like whether it's Morgan Fox or Hassan Reddick and or Denzel Perriman, you got veterans there to go on top, you know, or even Daquan Jones, you know, former captain with, with Tennessee mm-hmm. and him and Derek Brown one year, another year under his belt. You got Brian Burns, who's hungry as hell right now. You can tell. And so the pressure's on him. Like he's got versatile players. Is, is he a, a versatile mind who can try to coordinate this stuff? You know what I mean? And I think he did an okay job with Jeremy Chin, like used him properly. Like, um, you know, if they did end up drafting Isaiah Simmons that year, like how, what could they have done with him? But, you know, because Jeremy Chin is, in my opinion, done better than Isaiah has so far in his career. What yeah. could they have done with that, you know, first round type talent? But I think he's got, I think he's got a lot of pressure, um, you know, like seeing with him and offensive coordinator Joe Brady. You know, could this is this a well? They're both kind of proving it in their own way right now. Like, great, like, can he prove it to be a head coach? And Phil Snow, can he prove it to be, you know, the main dude on the defensive side? Uh, but yeah, that's that's why I said that he has kind of no excuse at the end of this year with all the stuff they're bringing in. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah, I agree, man. I think Phil, again, even talking about Jeremy Chin, he, he, like he said that, yo, it's it's you get weird signals from the Panthers when it comes to Jeremy Chin because mm-hmm. in one moment they'll say they're gonna move him to safety, and then Phil Snow comes out and says, yo, we we would be remiss if we, which is what I said. Now ain't nobody gonna give me credit when I'm right. Y'all like to tear me down when I'm wrong, but Phil Snow said what I echoed uh, last week. And I said, yo, you can't box this man in the safety. You have to move him around. You have to play him all over the place. Use him in the same manner that you used him last year. That's how he succeeded. You can't just box him in a safety. He did kind of – he didn't necessarily walk it back, but he did say that, you know, last year, you know, uh, Chen played more from the front back, meaning he played a lot of snaps in the box. Um, and this next year – or this year coming up, he's going to play from the back up. I mean, he's going to play more snaps uh, as safety, and he, you know, you're going to see him uh, kind of blitz and stuff. But he mentioned, he's like, yo, we can't have a guy like Jeremy Chin in the secondary and not blitz him. Like, he's too good. He's too quick. He's big. You can't not blitz him. So, again, I, I'm with Phil. I'm with what, what Phil said. You have to put him all over the place. Mm-hmm. you got to line him. He's a weapon. He's a chess piece. You can't just stick him back there at safety, which is why I think a high-high Clinton Dix or a a hooker signing is so important because you have a real safety back there that you can stick back there and allows you to move Jamie Chen around. Mm. We, but also it appears- gonna get cut. we also know who's going to get cut in training camp. There could be some There could be some guys out there that are name brands who get cut in training camp. Like, yep, pick him up. Maybe some from Seattle. Scott Fitter keeping his eye on that. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, I, I mean, again, I, I like Phil Snow. I think, again, we were tough on the dude – coming out and listen Morgan Fox dog we 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 rock with Phil Snow now we told you that in the interview we don't want no smoke uh with Morgan Fox or his people mm. he might he might got shooters just like Robbie Anderson so I'm he came from LA so you never know uh, mm. Morgan bro we, we don't want no smoke we love Phil Snow okay uh so shout out to shout out to Morgan Fox shout out to Phil Snow we rocking with Phil I think he's gonna do a good job but like I said he's got the pieces now he's going to have to execute with what he has. You got Hassan Reddick, you got Brian Burns, who he actually has a partner now. Daquan Jones, Derek Brown, Morgan Fox. And then I mean the real question mark is the linebackers. You talk about Perryman, uh, you know, can he play uh all 16, 17 now? Or uh is Shaq gonna step up? Because I'm sorry Shaq is is, is overpaid. I don't I'm not I don't not the biggest Shaq Thompson fan. Um but the linebackers there's some question marks for me and the linebackers, but the secondary, if we can get a, if high high Clint Dix is signed and he can, um, you know, uh, return to that pro bowl level or somewhat to that pro bowl level, that secondary is going to be so good, man. I, mm-hmm. I just think that's going to, we turned the, a, a weakness to a strength this off season. If mm-hmm. horn pans out and, uh, if Dante Jackson plays well and stuff. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. 
Is any more thoughts on Phil Snow in the defense before we um you gotta teach Shaq Thompson how to tackle properly? <laughs> I hate how he hits sticks. He always hits sticks, man. Yeah. He kills me. He kills me with the hit stick attempt. And then you got guys like Kamara just bouncing, spinning off. It kills me. But if you can teach him how to do that, that's it. That's it. But you just I I feel you there with, with the Shaq. When Shaq plays sometimes, it makes me makes me yeah. so sad. Because he'll he'll like he'll look good and what he'll make like a highlight play. Mm. And in the same, in the next place, he, he just disappears. It's just yeah, consistency, yeah. consistency for Shaq. That's all we need. Mm-hmm. And he's not. I'm sorry. I, I, he's not worth the, the money's getting paid. I, no disrespect. I don't. I don't like the pocket watch, and I'm not. And it's not his fault, right? He mm-hmm. signing what's being offered to him. But I just don't mm-hmm. think he's worth what we're paying him. Right. So that's just just my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, moving on from Phil Snow, let's talk about Sean Ryan because Sean Ryan also spoke with our quarterbacks coach. Talked a little bit about Sam Darnold uh, and how they're working on his feet. He's got they're saying he's got the arm. They're saying, you know, they're saying what we pretty much have already said about his youth. He's he's good. He looks good out there. They're, they're excited about him. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, <laughs> what what I mean, what are y'all thoughts on, on Sean Ryan? I mean, because Sean has worked with some good quarterbacks. I mean, mm-hmm. truth be told, he's worked with a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Deshaun Watson being one of them has worked with some good guys. So he's had some success. Can he turn around Sam Darnold? He's going to have to if you want to keep the coaching staff around, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does he mean less moving parts equals more accuracy? Is that like physically or like mentally? Because we know we know Sam sees I think go. it's mentally. I think it's mentally. I think that uh, – I think – and again, even and most people said it. We've heard Joe Burrow say uh, about – um, about Joe Brady's system is that there's guys always going to be open. You just have to find the guy, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's somebody's going to be open all the time. You just got to get it to the right guy. Mm-hmm. And I think that I think Phil Snow, uh, excuse me, um, Joe Brady's offense is going to make it easier. Um, so I, I don't know. I I got so much I want to say, and I, I'll hold it. I'll hold hold it for a little bit later. But I I I'll reserve my my thoughts on Sean Ryan. So any thoughts on Sean Ryan and, and how he's going to work with with uh, Sam Donald this season. Any any thoughts on that? I mean, I'm I'm rooting for I'm rooting for Donald, man. I'm rooting that I'm rooting that Sean's gonna get him right. Cause I think I think uh I think our fan some some portions of our fan base has decided that that Sam's a significant upgrade without the man playing a down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I, we need to be careful with that. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I feel like they kind of have water wings on on Sam right now. Like they're you know they're trying. They're they're protecting him. He's kind of in bubble wrap. They're protecting him. They're defending him. They're saying all the nice things, all the right things, but like you know, there are those stats of just being in a clean pocket. How inaccurate his even in a clean pocket. And it's not like he's upgrading his offensive line, right? And so I think you know they're never going to go out there and be like, yeah, he was our third choice. You know, it was Deshaun. And, and well, then- not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not Let yet, him play yet. off them. They will. They not will yet. throw him under the bus. Right. Trust me. We've right. seen that happen. And like, you know, remember, like I've said it before, like Matt Rule said, like, I can't wait to coach Cam Newton. Can't wait to coach Cam Newton. They never got, never did it. And, you know, we got the richest owner in the NFL. And what's $18 million? What's $18 million? It's nothing. It's just another flyer. And they're just kind of doing the, like, I'm in, I'm in news. Like, I know when politicians are speaking – you know, some smoke and mirrors and try to they're trying to warp an image. And I hope he's I hope he can be something and feel confident with guys like Christian who he's known before. And you know, DJ seems to speak highly of him. And um, I don't know, it just seems like they're in a he's like a nice guy. He's a nice guy in a relationship. Like he's a nice guy. He's nice. Yeah. Teddy was a nice guy too until until he wasn't. Yeah. So I I don't know. But well, I'll, I'll reserve my my thought. I got a, a, a segment that I want to hold my Sam Donald opinion on. So I'm, I'm gonna hold that thought for a quick second. Like, is there any um, more pressure on anyone else? Game one, then no, there is not. Right not no, there's not. not an hour. Nope. If he loses that game, or like, hey, doesn't dude, look stupid. I'm gonna be honest. Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I swear. I see, I see a scenario <laughs> where Sam Donald, where the the Panthers could lose this game, and it isn't Sam's fault. I legitimately see a scenario where that happens, mm. but the odds of that scenario happening is slim and yeah. none. Mm. If because the thing is, if Sam Donald throws for 300 yards, three touchdowns against the Jets, no interceptions, and we still lose, I'm not going to put that on Sam. Right. I'm going to be a fair person 
about it because there's got to be something else if he does that. But if my man out here throwing picks in the fourth quarter, no. Or right. even if he if he plays and well, but he gets out flashed by Zach Wilson, like I like, dude. But that's problematic. Y'all, y'all are that's gonna make me say it. Y'all are gonna yeah. make me say my hot take. I, my, let me hold it. Let me hold okay, it. I'm hold gonna it. I'm gonna say it, but I, I'm I gotta hold it. Let's talk about this next because I, I agree with everything y'all saying. If mm-hmm. he loses to the Jets, that's not good. It's mm-hmm. it's not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we you can't get uh started off on a worse foot than losing to your the team that cut you unceremoniously. So, mm-hmm. um, or yeah. So Trade anyway, him. traded him. Excuse me. Uh, but let's let's talk about this last one because mm-hmm. this has he has he has something to do with my hot take. So mm-hmm. I'm just gonna hold it. Uh, but Joe Brady, he spoke as well, and they asked him a, a crap ton of questions. It's like they've been waiting it was to speak. A fifteen to minute him interview. Forever. It was super long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they they were like, I've never seen questions being shot off at, at so quickly. Like as soon as somebody was done, they would jump in another question. They were really eager to talk to him, and they did talk about Teddy Bridgewater, and he gave the PC answer. You know that they, they were cool, and it is what it is. He didn't address Teddy Bridgewater, the comments, or nothing like that. So there's nothing to take from it, uh, from that. But he did talk about Sam Darnold. He talked about why they picked him up. They talked about the youth. They talked about he loves working with them. The same PC stuff. He also talked about Christian McCaffrey. And one of the biggest things to take away from this is this bottom quote right here. Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Brady says his mindset has not changed in regards to Christian McCaffrey's usage. After his injury plague 2020 season. Now what what does <laughs> now go ahead? Go ahead, Dave. Number <laughs> one, <laughs> number one running back in fantasy, guys. If you got the first overall pick, take him. <laughs> take him. And Chuba, you got to wait, buddy. Mm-hmm. You ain't getting no carry. <laughs> Try to tell y'all. Best hand, most important handcuff in fantasy, though. I will say that. Oh, For yeah. sure. That's a fact. Most mm-hmm. important handcuff in fantasy is Chuba. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have to wait, buddy. You might not get five carries at this rate. You'd be lucky to get five touches. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, really from his interview, I didn't get much from it outside of the Christian McCaffrey talk, outside of the, uh, you know, th- there was really nothing to, to really get from it. It was real kind of chalk answers. Um, so it is what it is with, with Joe. They, they tried to get into his brain about, what feedback he got from his interviews. He didn't answer the question. Um, so it was really tough to kind of read Joe Brady and kind of see what was going on in his mind. Did talk a little bit about Terrace Marshall, mm-hmm. how good of a guy he is. Um, but uh, outside of that, it was really nothing. I think Phil Snow was the best interview by far. He opens up. I mean, he gets into scheme stuff. He Phil Snow kept it 100. He also feels so I didn't say uh, uh, earlier, but he did say four three was the base defense. Not that it matters because mm-hmm. you can play anything, you can play multiple. But he did say four three was the base. Yeah. Uh, but any thoughts on Joe Brady and um, his 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 interview? Uh, I think it's, I, I listened to the whole thing. I'm like, this guy didn't say uh uh well. Like he's so well spoken. Like the dude, you could tell he's been doing interviews with owners of teams like he's he's a head coach he sounds like a head coach whereas phil snow you're saying sounds like coordinator because he, like, he knows i'm not gonna be a head coach i'm just gonna say a bunch of stuff but but but, but joe yeah thing, he, he's, the funny he's, thing is hmm. he might have yo know, phil might have the potential to become one if he wanted to ever wanted to do it if he he's, older. he's older he's old though he's no older. matter we just do we just they just look but we just had a team hired like somebody almost in their 70s to be a head coach mm-hmm. Well, we got yeah, what? Wasn't that Houston? Angio is a head coach. That was David Culley, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we can't we can't look at Houston and, and put them in. Oh, stuff. okay, yeah, that's yeah, not. A no, Denver, yeah. Denver's head coach is older. Fangio, he's an older guy. Yeah, but okay, Chuba's sure. gonna get some work. I I think Chuba like Chuba says he modeled his game after Christian McCaffrey, so he would like you say he could be a good hank of if, if Christian. I don't want Christian to get hurt, but uh, maybe I don't even see Chuba doing special teams, really like returning punts or anything like that. Uh, he's going to get a lot of looks in preseason, though. But the only thing is when I feel like when they put some other back in that's not Christian, they kind of figured Panthers are going to pass. Maybe they weren't as, mm-hmm. you know, as versatile as Christian. You just kind of knew. Like, Mike Davis was a beast, but uh, you just kind of like, – he, he did did some sneaky things in the screen game, but I feel like with Chuba there, you kind of don't know. What's he going to do? Like, is are they going to run it? Are they going to pass? Is he going to – is he the focal point in this, in this play? So I feel like, you know, Christian is only going to get – older and 
just add those miles on. But he seems to be taking care of himself in the off season, and he's got a personal chef and all this stuff. But who knows? He also has a long term girlfriend. Like, is he still a killer? Like, I don't know. We'll see. Mm, so you say he's soft now? Pause. Not saying he's soft. I'm just saying he's he's thinking about his, 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 his unconsciously thinking about big picture in life, long term. Mm, I get it. I get you it. Know? I, hear you. I haven't I haven't thought about that theory. You see, he's I like the, she, he's like a semi influencer now. Like I see, so, no, I seen it. I see it, man. You're I right. Though. I haven't thought about that. And the uh, real quick shout out to Slim for the super chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, appreciate that, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> I, with Christian, man, listen, he's going to get all the work. And yeah. it, again, I, I feel like Christian needs to be moved around. Uh, you got to put him, play him more receiver. I, and that's what I expected from Joe. When I when we when we hired Joe, I expected us to put Christian McCaffrey in the best place to succeed, move him all over, put him in a slot, put him. And I just didn't see that. Uh, even in the, in, in the three games that he was available this year, he was lined up and he didn't get even get that many catches. Mm-hmm. He didn't get that many catches until the, the Chiefs game. It was it would, got better. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think if you take that Chiefs game and where we were able to put both backs on the field, I think that was mm-hmm. uh, that was a good indication of how things should be moving forward. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll see what happens because in the Raiders game, it was just all running back. He just played; he, did, he had like no catches. That's just not how he's Alex Arma to try to win the game. Up exactly. The like, exactly. Up with that. Exactly. Do yeah. something crazy. So, mm-hmm. So yeah, you got to you got to figure it out. Joe Brady also has a tough job. Uh, he's he's got a lot of guys, a lot of mouths to feed. Um, so there's a lot of talent, and they the guys got to coach it up. They got to coach it up, man. We'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. So um, real quick, this this is where we get to it. All right. So this has been floating around on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, you've probably seen this meme uh, going around, and there's been a lot of hot takes attached to this, and so. D- Dave, I, I think I already know Dave's, but Dave, do you have a hot take that like Panther Nation will fry you on because you're the only person that feels this way? What do you have a hot take? Oh God, man! <sighs> People are just gonna fry you about the Panthers, this about team, Panthers, or in general about the Panthers, about the Panthers. Oh, easily. Rule gets fired if we don't make the playoffs. Mm. Yeah, he's man, you've been trying to fire Rule since week two, uh, last year, too, man. Really? No, no, yeah. no, he has. no, not, not week, week two. two, but I, I was right about the whole fourth quarter thing, though, and then the lack of adjustments because mm. he had a former, he had a former player saying the same thing that I was saying. So, nah, I mean. I would get fried for that. I could talk about the Darnold situation. We didn't even bring that up about the whole. Uh, you can do a whole about- month's worth of videos on Darnold. Oh yeah. God! So, so my, mine is mine is related to to Sam Darnold. But um, I was gonna say I'm surprised you didn't say your DJ Moore hot take. So no, 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 I know nah, you got a nah. DJ Moore hot take to get fried for a day. Nah, 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 man. If you guys watch, <laughs> don't back my- down now. No, I'm don't not back. back- if, you now, guys, if you if you guys watch my 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 mock draft that I did this week. Mm. You would, you would, uh, some of you guys might like some of the picks that I made, or at least particularly mm. one. Mm. I drafted yeah. your boy, man. 50% catch rate and all. I think it would do better see, than that. See, there it is. I knew you could, I knew you couldn't help yourself. You couldn't help yourself, man. Taking a shot at uh, DJ, bro. It wasn't a shot. I mean, the numbers are the numbers. I mean, I'm not, it's not a shot if it's true, is it? So, so Phil, do you, do you have a hot take that that's kind of, it's just, to you, like you, you own it. Is this the way you feel, and and uh, you get fried for it? <laughs> well, Jake, Del- Jake Delon was fun to watch. He's a great commentator. But I, uh, my, some, one of the viewers actually said something about Christian McCaffrey. I like Christian McCaffrey, but I think my hot, like stupid take would be Chuba Hubbard as a starting running back by the end of the season because Christian might be gone, or or he could be a piece, or. Yeah, I think Chuba Hubbard's probably starting running back at the end of the year. That's what I think. Mm, like, Rule loves right. him. Because Rule chose him. Rule didn't choose Christian. Mm, that's a good point. There you go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, connecting a, the dots. Connecting the dots. The, the dots are connecting, young It's all about relationships. It's all so, about so, relationships. So I guess so, so here's mine. And I, I think a lot of people might agree with me. I might not get fried for this, but I'm just going to say it. I think, that, uh, I think that Sam Donald being an average quarterback – 
is going to be the worst thing to ever happen to the Panthers. Mm. That is going to be the worst. Him just being okay is going to be the worst thing to ever happen to the Panthers. Mm. Here's why, right? So if you if he comes out and does what Teddy Bridgewater does, it's going to be awful because you're going to string him along. He's going to be just good enough uh, to, to get that 18 million, right? And guess what's going to happen, right? Joe Brady leaves. Joe Brady's going to get a head coaching job, and we're stuck with Sam, an average Sam Donald for the, the near future, right? So I think, I think that's going to be the worst thing that could happen to the Panthers. We need Sam Donald to be like top ten. <laughs> in my oh, opinion, so that'd be a hot take. The hot take would be Sam Donald's gonna be top ten. Be- he he needs to be a top ten, yeah. a top ten quarterback. Mm. And so, sure, Sam Donald's gonna be a top ten quarterback. I'll, I'll roll with that. Mm. I just I just I just think that it, dude, it's gonna be the worst thing because he's, he's gonna do just well enough for us to string, string Listen, him along. Man, you about to get the face out of me. How about he starts more than thirteen games in a season and then get back to me? Mm. Yeah. So you don't think he will, or are you saying give him time? He hasn't done it yet in his Ooh, career, so nice. I'm just waiting for it to happen. Mm. Yeah, it's either if he's – I'm just scared that if he's real good, like top 10, is that like a one-hit wonder type thing? And, They're going to extend him. Joe Brady looking good. He gets a head coaching job. And then you get Sam Darnold without Joe Brady. The next yep. – you paid him Bingo. that money. You know, Bingo. You draft, yeah, you, you know, pay, you draft you low. You if, didn't – if, if if Sam Darnold is a top ten quarterback next year, they're going to extend that man. He's going to get more. Yeah. To, he's going to be more than that one year. It's then Brady's going to get it. Yeah. He's Brady's going to get that job, and then they're going to put a new OC in there. And we all going to be like, "Why do we pay him all that money?" And I'm be like, "Well, you know, that's what he's worth." It all depends on Deshaun too. I think I think Deshaun blows everything up, and I think they'll they'll for completely forget about who Sam was and all that great pub that they've made for him if he'd be not if old. bro not if not if sam's top 10 they're not going to be thinking about deshaun if sam goes top 10 cheaper they're not, be cheaper yeah they're not gonna think deshaun is gonna be an afterthought that man's a top 10 quarterback next year oh man i'm being i'm being real and the yeah. crazy thing is this fan base is gonna say we need to still go after deshaun if that man's top 10 which is insane to me you can't at that point if that man's top 10 you can't mm-hmm. You can't if he's top ten. If he's top ten, then you can't. Great move, but yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If he's top ten, then you got to make Joe Brady the highest paid offensive coordinator in the league. I'm surprised. I would be surprised if he isn't already. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. He really didn't want to talk about what that paper looked like. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. He, yeah. He didn't. He definitely dodged that question. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, man. Interesting. I, I, I just completely. Think- I completely agree with you, Marcus. Where's it at? I completely agree with you, brother. That's a big going job. to top ten. Sam Darnold will be a top ten quarterback this year, bro. I'm telling y'all right All now. All right. Under 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 Joe Brady's tutelage. Mm. So, meanwhile, Joe Brady goes out, gets a head coaching job, and we're left with Sam, the average uh, yeah, probably Ryan, uh, day as the head yeah. as the offensive coordinator. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, All right. So the joint practice is official with the Colts. Uh, so we play the Colts. I forgot. I got the schedule coming up here in a second. But we play the Colts. We got a joint practice with them. It's official stamped by Matt Rule. But, Dave, we also have a proposed joint practice with the Ravens, and we could see the Ravens in Spartanburg because that's a home game. So I, I don't know if you all recall back in the day when the Dolphins came to Spartanburg. And I think the Bills came um, – the Bills came uh, – the la- I think the last time training camp was open, the Bills came. Uh, so we have seen teams come to Spartanburg. We could potentially see Lamar Jackson in Spartanburg. That would be nah, interesting. That would it be could interesting. be very interesting. Could be very interesting. So I don't know if this is going to be open to the public again. They haven't announced what's good with training camp just yet, uh, but we'll see. But I'm hoping it's been it's proposed. They're trying to, and I don't know. I don't know if we've ever practiced with two teams mm-hmm. in a season. I don't know if that's ever happened before. So um, well, shout out to the coaching staff for trying to make it happen, though, twice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's important, man. You got it. And those are two good teams. Those are two playoff level Big teams. Right there. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a good look, man. Get some competition in the building. See what you got. Mano we mano. Mm-hmm. So redemption stories for Carson. Who has a better redemption story, Carson Wentz or Sam Darnold? Like who comes? Who has a better season? That'll be Sam Darnold because he's going to be top 10. I hope. Hey, if he's top 10, then that means 
Panthers are good. Your subs are up. Hopefully, my subs are up. And, you know, <laughs> everybody's subs are up. Everybody's subs be up here climbing. Yeah, everybody's like subs be up. That's funny. That's funny. All right. So, um, let's let's see what else I got. Here's the schedule. Mm. The schedule is, is released here. We got the Colts coming up in, on the 15th at 1, 1 p.m. Ravens the next week, 7 p.m. game. And then we got the Steelers, as, as always. Yep. Yeah. So, now it gets uh, interesting. Now that it's three games, that means the first two, they're probably going to have more reps for the starters, I would think. Particularly the second game, there'll be more reps for the starters. I think the, the second starters. game. Yeah, second game for sure. Third game, nobody's going to be playing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. I agree. All right, so last thing I got, ESP and Upstate. Make sure you check us out uh, on Odyssey at, on the Odyssey app. Excuse me. Uh, you can download the episodes. I go live every Thursday at one p.m. with my man Rob Brown from the Rob Brown Show. Super cool dude. Make sure you check that out. Download the Odyssey app. Download the episodes. We we go usually go on hour two. So if you're looking at the Odyssey app and you want to download the episode. Go to uh, hour two, and we'll be first up on hour two. All right. So uh, that's all I got, fellas. Wow. That's all I got. Um, so we're gonna talk about Samuel. You, we could talk about Samuel. Let's do it. What? All right. We didn't bring it up, but I'm gonna ask the question, man. Mm. What are your thoughts about? And and I I don't want to sing out Sam because that's not fair to Sam. Because there's some other players that felt the same way. What are your thoughts about you know uh, the the whole vaccine thing, man, with him mm. and other players too. Cause I mean, as I know, like as bad as folks have been going at Sam about it, he wasn't even the worst one out of the whole bunch. If you want to go from NFL protectors, Montez Sweats takes his cake for me, but you know, I always, I always had, I'm always of the opinion that it's your decision. You can do what you want. It's your call. You know what I'm saying? It's your body. That's how you feel about it. That's how you feel about it. I just think, God forbid, that man turns positive. We already know what the discussion is going to be. We already know what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, for yeah, I think – so I talked about this on Rob Brown's show, and he asked me about it. And I, I said the same thing you said, Dave. I don't think it's – you know, ain't none of my business what he does or what he does with the shot. I, I mean, I told him, like I said, I got it because I want to travel. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm vaxxed up. But uh, if he don't want to get it, that's his business, bro. He want to do more research, and that's the same way I felt. I told him, I told Rob, I felt the same way. I felt this thing. Everything he said with the research, I get it, bro. You gotta, you gotta research and see what's going on. It ain't been out long enough, so I, I get everything he said. He's gotta wait to see, weigh his options. So if he don't get it, that's on him. Like I feel like it's his. It ain't none of our business. And in fact, I think I said this on the show too. I think it was tasteless to ask him. Yeah, you don't. I, ask I don't think it's none of your business. You ask people who they vote for. Yeah, that was, that was tasteless kind of to ask him. Don't you don't ask that kind of question. That's person's business, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. they ain't none. They well, ain't the think, public's business. Think, and you put well, and you put him in a messed up situation. Now he getting slandered all over the all over the media because he ain't got a vaccine. That's his business to get. I, and he, he, of, you do I you think, ask the players they get the flu shot? Like mm-hmm. what what are we doing? I think part of the problem why they they I think the reason why the media and you know how I am when it comes to the media and things of that sort but I think part of the reason why the media no offense man I think part yeah. of the reason why the media <laughs> part of the reason why the media asked them the question the reporters asked them the question was I guess the NFL based on the percentages of the players and the staff the more people that are vaccinated the more things that you can do you do more one on ones with some of your players the coaches some of the coaches aren't vaccinated either so when they're not vaccinated they can't have one on ones with their players that can impact the team. That can impact wins. That could put you at a disadvantage. So I can understand why the the, the, the the media made the decision to ask the question. Because I think that's going to be a factor. Like there's some level of normalcy that doesn't come if the team, this players, I mean, the team doesn't hit the certain percentages that they got to hit. So I think I understand why they did it. I get where you're coming from from that standpoint. And like I said, it's his decision. He can do what he wants. I get why they, but I understand why they asked. Because I think... The percentages isn't where they expected it to be, because you would think the players want to get get back to normal business when it comes to nah, teams. man, ain't none of our business, bro. Mm-hmm. If I don't volunteer the information, don't ask me, bro. Ain't none of your business yeah. whether I get it or not. If you don't want to get it, yeah, it's not mandatory. Yeah, if, if it was mandatory so and they not. made him get it, then then sure. But mm-hmm. he ain't got to get it if he don't want to get it. And the science wise, like you know, yeah, if he gets sick, he'd get sick, but. If you were to give it to coaches, if they're fully vaxxed, 
you know, nothing's going to happen to them. It would if if mo- if, enough, if enough of the players are fully vaxxed, it's not like he's going to create right this outbreak yeah. right like put other people and, out of harm. And we played a full season without a vaccine last year, bro. Like it's it's cool. Like they got they, yeah. they got the protocols in place. They know what to do if somebody gets it. We're good. It's mm-hmm. all good, man. It's his decision, man. If he gets it, he gets it. See, can't, some stuff you just can't control, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you can still get it with the vaccine. It's not going to stop yeah. you from getting it. Right. Yeah, it's just gonna stop your, re- your, your your reaction to it. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, it, help, it stops, help lessen the reaction. Yeah, it stops you from stops you. It hopefully stops you from going to the hospital or dying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose yeah. of the vaccine, ultimately, right? Exactly, because right. you can still catch it, but you can still right. get it. Yeah. So like, not gonna stop you from like, getting it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, yeah, I, I get it. I, I well, I don't get why they asked him. I, I think it was stupid to ask him that, um, and I think it put him in a bad position. He he. And be, Sam being the nice guy that he is answered the question, but he nah, he, an he answered it way better than Montez Sweat. I will tell you that. What is, yeah, everybody's saying, what happened to Montez Sweat? What'd he say? Man, this dude was like, I don't need to take something, I don't need to take something without it being treated when I don't have it. So, like, I mean, mm-hmm. if I get it, then maybe I'll take the shot type of thing. That's the type of vibe that he was bringing, right? So, he doesn't really know how it works. Yeah, he doesn't no, know. No, no, but he said, well, I've been I've been trying I'm continuing to get my research, but the thing is, him being in Washington, mm. they have a lot of resources that other NFL teams don't. So, like, they brought in the doctor that helped make it. build the vaccine, make the vaccine, mm. and it's they're like, I don't know why they did something like that. I was like, but you're the one that said you asked for more information, so we brought the source to you. <laughs> mm. You know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of hesitancy within the players about mm. taking the vaccine. But like I said, it's their decision, it's their call. I mean, some people feel like, all right, you're going to keep saying you're doing the research. You're going to you're still doing research. But then some people can also come back and say, well, it's been a year. Like, what, what you waiting for? You know, mm. it's been six months. What you waiting for? So it, it all depends. But um, nah, Brady's not getting promoted, bro. I don't see that happening. I also don't see rule going like it. They, no, if they show regression, like early regression, maybe. But no, nah, I yeah. think I think if rule, I think rule can't. Trot out another five win team. No, no, no. At least you, I, I, we agree there. No, he can't right. trot out another five win team. He can't, no. he especially cannot. if Christian healthy the whole year. You can't, yeah, he can't. No, he cannot. No. I think like some eight, people, nine, in the fan base, nine and eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that range, he's safe. Mm. If he hits like four or five games, yeah, challenge for the division, you know, yeah, he's gotta hey, be, in there. he's gotta be in there. That was, uh, I, I agree with Fed now. Nah, shout out to Fed, Fedville. That's my hometown. Shout out to two six. I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, agree man. with Fed now. Nah. I, I agree with everything are. he said. I agree. It's, it's broken. No, everything he said. I'm anti Panther it. now. That's what it is. Yo, Dave, you do have a vibe. This. I'm yo, honest, said, bro. <laughs> I'm honest, bro. What you want me to do? Oh, I'm just oh. honest, man. And then when, but then I don't get credit when I'm right. That's I true. Told you that like, we're going. They don't yeah, like to I'm give like, you credit when you're right, though. That they, no, they, they will kill us. No, nah, it's That fine, goes man. both ways, too, though. That goes both ways. No, but I'll own up when I'm wrong. I own <laughs> up when I'm wrong. I have no problem owning up when I'm wrong. I said we we're gonna bring Dwayne Haskins in. Y'all thought I was wild. I said that. I said that. I said that we weren't gonna take fields even if you sitting there. Hey, y'all thought I was wild. I said that Darnold ends our chances to get any other quarterback. Y'all said I was wild. Hmm. But you know. I'm not gonna lie. I sometimes go onto Chicago Bears Twitter, and I see them talk about. Don't do it, man. I'm just like this. Don't is don't bad. get. I'll be, dude. Why do I do I that? I saw that. Uh, I saw that he signed the contract. I was sitting here like, man. Mm-hmm. I was so depressed. Listen, man. No, you shouldn't be depressed, dude. I will I'm be depressed. For the kid. I'm he, for the no, kid. No, I'm not rooting for. I hope he sucks. Mm-hmm. You want? You wanna, sucks. No, you don't. You know what? Yes, crazy. I do. I do. Wanna, I, wanna, I really honestly hear- do. You want to hear a crazy stat about the Chicago Bears? And I said it in the chat, so the folks in the Discord probably heard it, but I'll say it again. Did you know that the Chicago Bears have never had a 4,000-yard quarterback? Mm-hmm. Ever. In yeah. their franchise history. Ever. Ever. Oh, wow. That says a lot. Like, like them dudes been, been around pre-segregation. Mm-hmm. No, they've been around for a long-ass time. Like, they've mm-hmm. been around for segregation. They've been around for, like, almost 100 years. Like, Never had a quarterback to threw for four thousand yards. Wow! Never. And even when they sucked, they still couldn't get a quarterback to like. Yeah, who are the receivers out there? Huh? 
They got Allen Robinson. They got Allen Robinson. Yeah, they got Allen Robinson. Robinson. Uh, they got um. Uh, I mean, they picked up a couple cats. They've had some good wide receivers in their history. Hmm. I mean, they had Musa Muhammad at one point. They had right. Marshall at one point. Like to, to see that they've never had a four thousand yard passer is, is amazing to me. And Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. I mean, he. If there was anybody I thought that would have done it, it would have been him. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, you you credit me, so I'm waiting for my credit, brother. Because I've already been right a few times, sir. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I can't do that. I also look at North Carolina football as well, Sam Howell. But I don't. I think if the Panthers are that bad that they pick Sam Howell, then Rule's job is definitely in jeopardy. Spe- speaking speaking of that, you cannot. Do- you cannot like like if no. we're at the point where we're taking Sam Howell, there's no. You cannot have Rule back. No. You can't. Mm. You might as well go ahead and draft a guy that, that knows how to groom quarterbacks. And there's a there's a, there's a couple coaches. And out I'm not there really impressed by him either. Like I don't know. He's like DJ uh, Daniel Jeremiah compared him to Baker Mayfield, and that's not great. In my, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a Baker oh, guy. Oh man. Yeah, I, I think speaking of 2022, uh, I do have my uh, top 10 uh, quarterbacks list coming out pretty soon. I already got the list. I just got. <laughs> put the video together i'm trying to do something a little different with, with uh, my top 10 videos this year uh, so it's taking me some time uh but yeah man it's coming out soon so hmm. stay tuned man. uh but all right um let's see any anything else i think i think um slim mentioned something about sean Patton, which we haven't talked about hmm. uh sean Patton, oh, talk about him uh right. matt rules right hand man who was i think the vp of football operations or something like that he left uh and it's interesting. I I don't know. I have I've done a little bit of research, but I can't find a reason as to why he left. Well, uh, was the kitchen getting hot? Well, you know, sometimes the hot seat happens with other people on the staff. Instead of instead of the person that needs to get hot with, is it mm-hmm. scapegoat day? Well, I mean, I'm just saying. Sometimes the seat gets hot with other people on the staff. Sometimes, sometimes you might sometimes see it ain't like, you. Sometimes, sometimes it happens to the point where you know that some could, if this season goes really bad, you know that everybody's going to be out of there. Mm. Sometimes you realize that now you have a general manager there that didn't bring you through the fold. Mm. There were a couple of staff members who bounced. Couple, yeah, you know, so like I think some, yeah. some, some, sometimes you look, you look around, man. You, you bring it. You actually bring an actual GM. You ain't got Marty in there anymore. Mm. Sometimes you start thinking about, oh. This might not be as long term than I thought it was, mm. but you know we'll see. Mm. I mean, I'm root yeah. for rule. Don't get me wrong, but I stand by what I said. That man cannot try out a five win season and expect to no. get the job for the third year. Can't happen. Not with Tepper. No. Yeah, I agree. Cannot happen. No, I know people are saying, "Well, it's only the two years out of seven. Tepper's rich. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. That's the other thing. That, that's the thing that there's no negotiating. He's loaded. He can do whatever. I don't want it to be terrible, bro. I got to kill you, day. I got to watch these that, that's games why they too, call, That's why they call you anti-Panthers, Day. I got to watch these games just like everybody else, bro. I want us to succeed better than anybody else. But I'm just telling you that I think folks are trying to ask for Sam Darnold to be something that he's never been. And I think you got to have some level of being reasonable. Mm-hmm. I just need the band to be average. If the man's average, we're going to do better than what we did last season. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. Like if, he's a, if, if Sam's an average quarterback, middle of the pack guy, that's we should do enough. better than what we did last season. It's not good Whatever. enough for me. I know what it, I know what it's not for you because I know you want Justin Fields, but bro, the man just has to be average. He doesn't have to be top ten. The man just has to be average. Top just 10. have a solid run game. No, nah, defense need to be top ten. Mm. You yes. can't have him tired. You can't have him defend or, or you know try to get a, try to come back. Type I need defense. all I need right now, bro, is game manager Sam, a guy really? that can make the prop, the guy that can make the proper passes. Hand the ball off to Christian. Does what he needs to do when he needs to do. Clutch the occasion when we need him to be. Mm. And our defense gets us where we need to be. I got more faith in Phil Snow than anybody on this coaching staff. Wow, I agree. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, on that. like that's I'm where I'm at. You got the respect of the players. That's for sure. That's I'm telling oh, you, yeah, bro. Because we definitely got G check. We're talking about him. Yeah, bro, that's important, mm. man. I got, but I before the G check, I have more respect for Phil Snow than anybody else on the staff. Mm. I know yeah. I was stuff on him at the beginning, but I came around. 
So uh, one one quick thing I did, one last thing I did want to address was the left tackle position. See, because, this guy hasn't been watching. Wait, before we go, this guy hasn't been watching because this guy's been watching. He knows I've been against the Deshaun Watson trade from the beginning. So this guy obviously yeah, hasn't yeah. been watching. You're new. Uh, Welcome. Welcome to the show. It's been fun, you know, because I had no interest in getting up our draft capital for Watson. Mm. Period. None. Not an ounce. Everybody else has. I was against it. And I've been against it. Go watch the film. Okay. Mm. So so one one last thing about the left tackle position, because there's been a lot of talk. I've seen some other folks say that, oh, uh, they saw that Moten was taking snaps at, at left tackle. And uh, I think we got to pump the brakes on that because Matt Rule even came out and said that if we were going to play him at left tackle, he would have taken way more snaps there than uh, he has. That I think they're just doing it because people have been injured. They haven't been, play- you know, haven't been out there. They just kind of, you know, swinging him over there left just to kind of get his feet wet. Hmm. But he's not playing left tackle this year. So Matt Rule came out and said it. He's going to be right tackle. So that we, I know we've kind of flirted with it a little bit here, but Matt Rule came out and said, bro, he's playing left tackle. I mean, right tackle. Right tackle. Me, so so Moten, Moten's a right tackle for life, man, which is fine. Now we're going to keep which our is right where tackle. Which he should play. He which should he should play. play. I still but think they can rotate left tackle. I don't think we're. I don't think the starter, long term starter, is on the roster right now. No, nah, it's Trent. No, it's Trent. No, it, no. Nah, the long, no long term. But this season is. It's called. His name is Trent Scott. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. He man. could. He could be. He's the closest thing to long term mm-hmm. that we have. But yeah, the, I. It's. It's scary. It's scary. Mm-hmm. Real it, good guard. This, though, this is big. Good. This is. I agree. This. This yeah. is a great, yeah. great, great that statement right very here. Very true. Right I, there, I couldn't man. have said it. Better if you have multiple left tackle options, you don't have a left tackle. It's like one hundred percent agree. With, just like a quarterback, yep, yep. I agree, one hundred percent. I one hundred percent agree. I'm not going to get started in the offensive line because they say I complain about the offensive line too much, mm. uh, but I did want to point that out. So I, I'll spare I'll spare you guys the offensive line complaint today. Uh, well, no, no, cool, no, so. no, because we still need a left tackle, bro. We about to start Cam Irvin. Or Trent's – well, Trent nah, – Trent, if Trent, they, Trent wins a job, Cam I'm cool. Start, watch Cam start game one. Yo, if Cam it, start game I one – I got a weird feeling. I got a if weird Cam feeling. starts – but so, all right, so now let's 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 clear this up now because we yeah. got to get this clear. Because, like, I don't want everybody to butcher Donald, but if Cam Irvin starts and we know he ain't going to have no blind side, I can't kill Donald too much, bro. Which is what he, which is what he did have in it, with the Jets is he did have a blind side protector in Beckton. Yeah, he's and that's a gigantic, gigantic man. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. You can somehow see ghosts after that. That's kind of scary. That means he saw ghosts with the other four. <laughs> yeah. He saw it in front of him inside. It's like he saw it when it was coming. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Uh, all right. Anything else? Anything else? We can shut this thing down. Get feel back. Oh, he's got a serious production, Rashad and Dave, man. Like, this is wild. This is crazy. It took us a long time to get here, bro. I know. I could imagine, but just like, yeah, about the hot keys and the production value, and you guys are, the, you know, two man band. Like it's wild, it's crazy. Like it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely humbling to do this and like see what you guys are working with. It's wild. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, man. Anytime you got any questions, uh, I mean, you're a media guy, but mm-hmm. if you not, have any it's questions, not in this realm. <laughs> yeah, I'm just it's it, it translates. I'm sure some of some of it nah, translates. It'll, tra- but it'll translate. If, if you if you need any help with anything, uh, because I, I said the same thing to uh my man Clay from Pan- Pantherology. Mm. Same thing, like if you ever need any help with anything, just hit me up. Feel feel free, bro. Like I've mm. we've been in the game for a little bit. We're not the oldest in the game from a Panthers YouTube perspective, but mm. um, you know, we 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 do pretty well over here. Um, yeah, with a nice great. little following. So mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, anything else, Dave? I think well, that's let's, it. That's all let's, I got. Before we close, we got to let everybody know where we can find Panthers Post, and then we'll, we can close it out. Sure, sure. So, yeah, the, where, where can we find your all your information, the Twitters and all that good stuff? Yeah. And- uh, on Twitter, it's just at Panthers Post and then the number one. Uh, I've been focusing on the video. I should be better on social on that. But, yeah, if you just type in Panthers Post on YouTube, it's there. And you can also follow me on like on my other Twitter account, like my professional one. It's just at Phil Perkins CHCH, and I, I retweet a lot of stuff like that too, like all the Panthers Post stuff. Um, but yeah, if you just type Panthers Post on YouTube, it's pretty good to find it there. And I try to do once a week right now, and I think during the season, uh, I don't know how the streaming situation works, but I'd love to just like watch games, you know, stream people watch having me. People watch me watch the games. Yeah, we do that. I do like a recap type thing. 
yeah, but, we uh, we, yeah. we do that. It's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. You you get a, a lot of good, especially from other teams. They'll give it to you, bro. No, that's um, okay. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. So speaking of socials, because we we've been pretty bad in our socials too. We mm-hmm. actually uh, picked up a social media manager. Wow. Uh, so yeah. So it, we're on Instagram now. So pan- at Panther Nation PC on Instagram, mm. at Panther Nation PC on TikTok. Well, I just got to talk about it on Twitter. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything. We're on everything now. Uh, and so we got people that's going to do the stuff for us because I'm terrible at it. So sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to outsource. So wow. uh, we'll be on all this, man. We're going to be posting highlights from this show and other shows that we do. And it's going to be fun, man. So, yeah, social mm-hmm. game is what we're stepping up now. We got to get our socials up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is true. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. I'm doing more of the, the college stuff. We're, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do it. I'm I'm doing a year round this year. I'm not waiting like I did last year. I got a top ten quarterbacks video coming out, so it's I'm coming. It's coming. That. it's coming. All right. So that being said, man, we're gonna shut this thing down. Um, this was great. This was fun. Again, you're welcome back at any time. Uh, keep pounding, fellas. Keep, keep pounding, guys. We out. See. You.